Welcome to this presentation for the 2020 Young Structural Engineers International Design Competition. I'm going to be presenting the winner for the Drury Medal. Now, the Drury Medal of the institution is awarded to the best entry by a team or individual under the age of 25. And it was founded by the late Mr. Drury, who was the president from 1945 to 1946 and was established to encourage students and graduates of the institution to design adventurously. Um, now the competition has been held every three years um, and it's open to teams and individuals um, across the whole world. Um, we'd like to thank everyone who put so much hard work into their entries. Um, there were over 200 entries for the competition, which is the most ever. And um, let's hope that the competition continues um, to get bigger. Um, the brief I put together um, for this uh, competition was to design for a climate changing climate. And this looked at the fact that sea levels are predicted to rise by one to two metres by the end of the century. Um, the people who are going to be most affected by this are going to be those who live in low-lying areas and um, who are predominantly the poorest members of society. Uh, they depend on the sea and the rivers for their livelihood. The locations to be used for the competition um, are often known as the um, least um, developed uh, countries. And the um, challenge was to design a community settlement for 100 people um, taking a, a phased approach. Um, the idea was um, by rebuilding where they live, it would allow them to continue with their way of life. Now, the designs had to minimise costs, had to ideally use local and sustainable materials. Um, the details that were developed um, had to be for non-experienced builders and um, the entrants were also asked to look at um, broader climate change issues, for example, um, the increased incidence of uh, tropical storms. Um, we, we think that the entries um, we received um, are a brilliant showcase of the uh, creativity in structural engineering. And it shows that uh, engineers are here to address real world problems. The judging panel met several weeks ago and we had a really hard time um, deciding on the um, <coughs> winners. Um, so without further ado, um, it's my privilege to present the winner for the 2020 Young Structural Engineers International Design Competition and that's Prana Dada. Um, we really liked um, pronounce scalable modular design because of all of the thought that went into the design and its simplicity. And all of the judging panel um, praised the research you put into it and the concept as a whole. Um, the presentation was excellent. Now, Pranas design was for a site in Bangladesh where 80% of the land mass is in a floodplain or coastal and 18% of the country is flooded annually, causing loss of life and a lot of disruption to the country. Um, we liked um, the design because it uses locally available materials with details that can be put together without needing much specialist uh, construction knowledge, which um, nicely fulfills the brief. So over to you, uh, Prana. Um, thank you, John, for the lovely introduction. So I'll begin uh, my presentation accordingly. So for this year, for the competition, I came up with the idea of modular port structures. I chose Bangladesh because, like you said, it is susceptible for a uh, high amount of floods. Around 80% of land mass is, belongs to the flood prone area because of the rivers as well as its proximity to the sea. The peculiar aspect of the floods here is that the land gets inundated for more than three months. 
so the work and the living of the people here gets disrupted for a long time so we need a solution where people can work as well as continue their lives along with uh, living in the water so i chose uh, a site in the southern part of bangladesh in the barisal region so this site uh, i've depicted in a uh, in the picture that is susceptible to floods like most of the site is can go under water for about 3 months so to overcome this problem i present the following solution so this is the main aspect of my design a monopod so monopod is basically a construction of the superstructure with local materials which is similar to the houses we see in those places the only improvisation and addition i uh, suggest is using a scaffolding tube as well as a grillage of uh, bamboo so this bamboo grillage system uh, maintains drums filled with air so these drums are generally found in the local markets and are easily available so the only criteria here is we need a volume of about uh, 1500 liters of air and uh, this grillage system then goes inside the um, scaffolding tube so i'll explain the working mechanism uh, when the water or the flood level is low the state the structure is stationary there's no need of uh, the grillage is no more needed but if the water level increases the grillage system along with the drums uh, due to the buoyant forces uh, ra- raises according to the water levels so basically the bamboo goes inside a hollow scaffolding tube so as the water level rises this tube in tube mechanism causes the bamboo to slide inside uh, the scaffolding tube this solution is perfectly suitable for sloping planes because for hilly regions stilts are a good option whereas for flat planes a simple floating device works but for sloping planes we need a combination of both because a uh, uh, floating material cannot sustain on sloping planes so a combination of stilts and a guiding pole came with a unique uh, option of using scaffolding tube as a stilt and a guiding pole so the structure behaves as a amphibious style structure the construction process is extremely simple and it can be implemented even during the flooded stage so if a land is flooded the construction process can still go on all we need is uh, the scaffolding tubes this is the important uh, thing when the water is uh, when the land is flooded we insert the scaffolding tubes in the ground once the anchorage has been set we put the grillage inside the tubes where we get a platform to build the superstructure on it using mat of bamboos we create create a platform and uh, using braced bamboos we create a uh, frame uh, which can resist the loads and the walls and the roofing material can be done by the thatched grass so a structure made of local materials as well as uh, improvisation is is extremely easy for construction process however uh the the construction needs to be done in two stages the first first stage is meant as a temporary stage and can be done during floods but as the water, flood water recedes after the floods the uh scaffolding needs to be concreted and braced for better strength the most important parameter of the design is i feel is the space design a single monopod unit can be a uh, club together to form bigger units depending upon the uh, utility of the family and the family composition so the people can build their own homes depending upon their needs also a uh, provision of spaces below the uh, grillage for storage or for parking boats is beneficial during the floods as well as after the floods because uh, once the floods come there is hardly any space for storage so the boats and other materials can be stored in such places also the boat can act as an additional buoyant material to lift the houses during 
during the fluids so the the whole space and the whole uh, monopod can be utilized to its optimum use uh to build all this we need safe structures because bangladesh is uh, susceptible to very strong winds as well as the floods so uh, to ensure safety i carried out analysis preliminary analysis based on the winds the lateral uh, water pressure i calculated uh, the buoyancy requirements so that the structure can take up the wind loads as well as the self and the gravity loads based on the analysis and uh, calculation it was found out that this mechanism is perfectly safe for these kind of loads also the strength of bamboo is sufficient to resist these loads additional strength uh, and improvisation in design is proposed by adding bracing systems uh, at suitable places also i chose the span in such a way that uh, the material is optimized to its limit because as we can see there is hardly any material used and uh, the space design is optimum uh, as per the structural designs hence the design is is quite safe for such loads uh concluding i feel like this design is perfectly suitable for this region because of the simple points it's extremely cheap it's extremely simple to construct the materials which i have used and proposed to use are sustainable with the environment also as i told you earlier there is lot of scope for improvisation people can build their homes according to their needs because the issue with a uh, standardized or a uh, rigid uh, solution is that uh, once it is given the people have no authority or control on how to design their homes this solution gives them the power uh, to design their own homes because it ensures safety as well as uh, suffices all their needs also the alternatives available in 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 case the drums or the other uh, materials are not available is provided so even if some problem occurs then they can improvise and use different materials to build the, their houses so in this community which i have designed uh, i use the monopod to build bigger structures depending upon the needs so during the the main occupation here is fishery so these people have boats so according to their needs the spaces have been designed so if the floods happen uh, to avoid movement by water i proposed a pontoon bridge to connect the village center the shopping center as well as the toilets so in general there is connectivity ensured in such in such community finally my concluding remark is that success in small community could inspire large scale adaptations so with that i'd like to conclude my presentation thank you pranav many congratulations it um could just go to show that uh, a simple design is often the best um it really does um can you possibly take us through a few aspects of the design um when you were developing the design did you consider other forms that then sort of arrive at the fact that you know the square tessellating part is probably the most optimum uh, shape uh yes based on the analysis i found the most optimum design was uh, ensured in a rectangular form so i stuck to the uh, proportion of 2 meters by 2.5 meters which was yeah. suitable for uh, living needs and yeah the material was used in the optimum way brilliant yeah um now what did you find to be the most um challenging thing about the competition would you say uh i feel solutions can come up easily but actual implementation is the key aspect in uh, in such places so yeah. right from day one my goal was to build or propose a solution which can be actually implemented on site so with yeah. that goal uh, that was the most challenging aspect i feel of uh, yeah. the competition absolutely um now um did you actually build any small scale um models of your design to help you conceptualize it 
Um, did this feed into um, your uh, development? Um, did you use it to test your ideas? And did you adopt some ideas and discount others? Uh, I actually did not build anything, but my city is also susceptible to floods uh, in some places. So I visited such small settlements where such kind of houses are there. So I okay. studied how these houses are built. And yeah. uh, using their techniques, I just added a few aspects which could help uh, such houses to be safe even during the floods. So yeah. in that way, I studied the uh, models. Yeah, fine. Okay, great. Um, so um, I'll, I'd like to say that we really liked how you visualized um, the community as a driving force for building the settlement. Um, because at the, end, at the end of the day, um, if any of the schemes can come to fruition, it's going to be the people themselves um, who are going to be rebuilding their community. You need to be deeply involved from the beginning um, and work with them, not to sort of impose a design. So we really liked um, that sort of thought you'd given to it as well. No, fantastic, really, really well done. You should be very, very proud of yourself. Yes, thank thank you so much, John, for the kind words. It's, it's an honor. And it was really fun to work in this competition because such aspects generally we don't think unless we are forced to. So when yeah. I was working uh, on the competition, I genuinely felt that this idea can be really implemented, at least in my city. So with that thought, I hope to build a, more, a small scale or a model for one or two people. I, I hope to build. That'll be fantastic. And this idea did inspire such kind of thoughts and among the peers as well. So such competitions do help in promoting a thought or an effort towards such causes, I feel. Yeah, absolutely.